We've looked at three ideas, the basic counting principle, permutations and a few cases of that, and then we looked at combinations. Now what becomes the tricky part now is when they give us a question, we have to work out which one of these sorts of things is it, so then we know which technique to use. So we're going to look at a mixture of problems here, look at probability and the counting techniques that we use, and we'll do it via some HSC questions. So 2007, this one came from Mr. and Mrs. Roberts, and their four children go to the theatre. They're randomly allocated six adjacent seats, so they've gone to the box office, got six tickets in a row. What's the probability that the four children get allocated seats next to each other? Here's my answer. Now, where does it all come from? Well, the bottom of the fraction, that's where no restrictions. That's where we put no restrictions. So with no restrictions, it's simply we want to arrange six people. So it's a permutation, the order is important. Arranging all of them, six factorial. The top of the fraction, now we look after the restrictions. Now we said the four children have to go next to each other. That is the four factorial in this answer. The number of ways we could arrange those four children. But once they've been arranged, they're now one object. So like one person. So we now have to arrange three objects, the two adults, plus that group, three factorial. So three factorial and four factorial, six factorial, which all tidies up to be one in five. Let's do an extension to one, because they're much more fun. A bag contains 12 red marbles and 12 yellow marbles. Six marbles are going to be selected at random. We want the probability that exactly three of those marbles are red. So exactly three of them are red. So probability three being red. Now in this case it's a combination because we don't actually care about the order we're pulling them out. We just want to know how many ways we can do this thing. So bottom of the fraction, no restrictions. So there are 24 marbles, we're going to select six of them, so 24C6. Top of the fraction, now let's look after the restrictions. And we said three of red ones. There were 12 red ones all up, so 12C3. I now have to get the other three marbles and they have to be yellow ones. There's also 12 of those, so times 12C3. So 12C3 times 12C3 on 24C6. And they set to two decimal places, so 0.36. The second part, hence or otherwise, calculate the probability that more than three of the marbles are red. Well, more than three, what are all the possibilities? I could have had four red, five red, or six red. So I've got to work out each of those probabilities. Bottom of the fraction is still 24C6. Top of the fraction would go 4 red. So from the 12 red I'm going to choose 4. But that therefore means I'm going to choose two yellow ones from the 12. Or, so we add, from the uh, red ones I'm going to choose 5 times from the yellow ones I'm going to choose 1. Or I'm going to choose 6 from the uh, 12 red ones and none from the 12 yellow ones. And all of that turns out to be 0.32. Now they did say hence though. Now hence usually means using what you've just done. So they're giving you a clue that, hey, there might be an easier way. They did say or otherwise, so this solution perfectly acceptable. But what could we have done? I could have said this. So probability of greater than three red, I could think about it a different way and use the complementary event idea and go, well, that's one minus the probability of three of them being red, because we want more than, but also probability less than three red. But that's gonna be the same as probability of three red, but probability of greater than three yellow, because if I have less than three red, I must have more than three yellow. But more than three yellow must be the same as more than three red, because they're equally likely, I can create now an equation. I can create an equation where I'm going to move the probability of greater than 3 red to the left hand side, and I get two lots of that is 1 minus the probability of 3 red, divide both sides by 2. So 1 minus what we worked out before, and we get the answer 0.32. Is that quicker? I don't know that it is. But they did say hence or otherwise, so I was interested to see how could I use part I to solve this. 
you know, the way I actually did it in the first place, it was probably quicker, to be honest. But that's how I could have done it using the first part. Okay. Here's another extension to one, and this one you really got to read carefully. Sometimes the language in these questions is what tricks you up. So, chess match between a home team and an away team, and there's four boards that they're playing on. Now, on each of the boards, the probability of the home team winning is 0.2, a draw 0.6, and the home team losing, therefore, is 0.2, because They've all got to add up to be one. The way they record the results is simply by writing down the letter of what happens, whether it be a win, a draw, or a loss. So the example they've given there, home team wins on board, well, that should be board one, on board one, draws on board two, loses on board three, draws on board four, we'd say WDLD. That's the result. How many different recordings are possible? So all this really is, is one of those questions about, well, how many words could we form? But it's actually the basic counting principle because I can reuse letters if you like. So first board, how many possibilities? Oh, there's three. Times second board, how many possibilities? Oh, there's three. And so on and so on and so on. So three times three times three times, 81. 81 different possibilities there. Well, all right then, calculate that result they talked about, the win, draw, loss, draw. Well, they told me probability of win was 0.2, probability of draw was 0.6, loss is 0.2, and draw is 0.6. So there's the probability, 0.144. Now, how do they get their points? Teams score one point for a game one, half a point for a draw, and no points for a loss. What's the probability that the home team scores more points than the away team? In other words, the home team ends up winning overall. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to work out the probability that actually they get equal points. How many different ways could this happen? Well, they could draw on each board. If they had a draw on each board, they would end up with the same number of points. So 0 0.6 to the power of 4, because we'd be going draw times draw times draw times draw, 0.1296. But what else could happen? Two wins and two losses would mean they would end up with the same amount of points, because they're both won two games, they're both lost two games. So how many ways could that happen? Well, this is where it gets interesting. Probability of a win was 0.2. So 0.2 squared, win-win. Probability of a loss was 0.2. So 0.2 squared. But how many different ways could we have two wins and a loss? This one becomes like one of those word questions. How many words could you form using two W's and two L's? Four factorial divided by the repetitions, two factorial, two factorial. And we end up with that 0 0.0096. But there is one other possibility. They could win a game each and lose a game each, but then on the other two boards, they draw both of those, they would end up with the same number of points. So let's work that one out. The win would be 0.2, the loss would be 0.2, two draws would be 0.6 squared. But now, the number of ways of arranging that win, loss, draw, draw, four factorial over two factorial for the two draws, 0.1728. Okay, I think that covers every possibility that they get the same points. So add them all together, probability they get equal points is 0 0.312. Now you might be thinking, why do that when the question actually is, what's the probability that the home team scores more? And I just worked out that they get the same. Well, here's why. Well, I've just worked out the probability the points are the same. So therefore, the probability the points are different. If I take that away from one, 0.688. So that's the probability that we have equal points. But go back to what they said. The probability of the home team winning was 0.2. The probability of the away team winning was 0.2. Equally likely. So if they're equally likely, then this unequal points, half of those must be when the home team wins, half of them must be when the away team wins. I just got to halve what I've just found, and we get 0.344. Let's do this one. Pack of nine cards, just label one to nine. Three cards drawn at random, and we're just going to basically lay them on the table. In other words, we're going to create a three-digit number where we place it on the table. What's the probability that that number that we put down exceeds 400? Probability, I claim, will be six in nine. Now, what's my logic? Really, to be bigger than 400, 
the first number needs to be greater than four. Well, four or more, isn't it? There are six numbers, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If it starts with one of those numbers, the number that I've created must be greater than 400. Six over nine. I don't actually have to work out all the different numbers. So two in three chance we end up with a number greater than 400. What's the probability that the digits are drawn in descending order? Now, not necessarily uh, 3, 2, 1. That is certainly is descending order. But it could be 9, 6, 2. They don't have to be consecutive numbers. It's just the numbers are descending. So what's the probability they are drawn in descending order? Well, I know there are three factorial different ways of arranging three digits. Because right? the digits are different. So order is important. becomes a permutation. I'm just going to put three cards down. How many ways can I do it? three factorial. Now it doesn't matter how I put these cards out, only one of those ways will have the cards in descending order. There's only one way I could do it and put those numbers in descending order. Therefore, the probability must be one in six. Of those six ways of putting the cards down, only one of them will have the digits in descending order. All right, look, A, I said yesterday, don't panic too much about these extension two ones. Uh, certainly way higher than the, the level we'll be looking at in extension one assessments. But they are fun to look at. It gets you thinking. It makes you thinking about the problem.